friends, and welcome back to Violin Teacher. We are studying Wolfhart, Opus 45, and now we're going to do number 16. So let me give you a few little heads up on a couple things in this one. Beautiful, beautiful one, and short and fun to play. But once again, you are going to be in business if you will play an equal bowing so that the 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 moving notes get the same kind of bow stroke as the dotted half note. So all the notes are on the D in the first measure. Now, aside from the fact that there is chromatic movement, which we'll talk about. See that hand. All those notes are on the D. So that in itself could be a challenge. Uh, the chromatic movement, but then we want to use a full bow. Then we have this chromatic movement. Now, lots of times we have the chromatic movement on a slur, in which case we hear the sliding around. So we really want to be precise on our movement. In the first one we have a low two, F natural to F sharp. So if you're going, you know, really slow in your slide, it's going to sound um, a little bit fuzzy intonation. You're going to have fuzzy intonation. We don't want that. So make that a quick, in fact, isolate the chromatic movement that causes you any slurpy, slidey sounds in your movement. Isolated. Okay, so once again, you could practice the separate bows and that would cover up the slide, wouldn't it? And that would be a valid practice, I think. But I would tend to try to take this a little bit faster if you could. So once you felt comfortable with the chromatic movement in the in the left hand, go ahead and try the slur because it's a very nice balance if you can do it. You get equal. See, it goes, it kind of ebb and flow, up and down. Really nice. All right, another thing that's happening in this one is uh, it's sort of strengthening the back of the hand a little bit. Not too. Not too hard, but uh, here's here's an example. Right at the first measure, you've got to stay on the D on that, and then in the in the uh, fourth measure, you have this one going from D. So you play four, and then it's hopping over. Leave those th the three down so that four has that back of the hand strength. Um, okay, and then there are some tricky fingerings. I put an X over a note in line two. And the reason is because this this opening theme comes back in line two. Now, this is kind of unexpected. Right there. So watch for that note. This is an up. That measure too, because this is in the key of C, so we don't really have an F sharp. So I marked my F sharp there. You might want to do that too. Let me just scan the music here real quick and see. One other really, I don't know if I'm going, when I play it, I don't even know if I'll get it yet, because I've had to isolate that one. But that's this measure. One, oh, see, line four, 
measure one, two, three, four, five, where the moving line begins after the after the G. Now I don't know. I I would assume that's up, and then you're going to play a a natural A, and then an A flat, a two right under it, which happens to be a low two or G natural. And it does ask us to play that A flat with the third finger. Then then F natural is a low one. So it's a little bit of an um, an odd fingering, but we do this one all the time in violin. So isolate it. I think the matter is that we don't expect that A flat. We don't get it anywhere else in this piece. So just be ready for it when it comes. At this point in the etude, which is really short, it's uh, it's transitioning kind of tonally. What comes after it? Low four. Low four. Low one. E flat. So be careful of that. And then finally, in line, uh, the last line where you drop down, you have a B natural. You don't expect to play that high two on G. So there's a lot of little tricky fingerings in it. Uh, it's a little bit like it's some hidden, you have to be really alert. Okay, and sometime I should probably do a video on what your eyes should be doing while you're reading music because you should be playing one measure while looking at the other. So in this case, I begin and I, I'm, I already know what notes I'm going to play in the first measure. I'm looking at the second measure. It's one note so I can look ahead, you see? So you should always be one or two measures ahead with your eye. And here's a great way, if you have a practice partner, here's a great way to uh, push yourself to do the right thing some paper here so you so you begin ba da 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 ba da 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 ba da 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 this paper won't move but you see what i mean i'm covering it up so my eye can't look back a lot of times we stop and start over because that is available but if you cover it up it's not available you just have to move on so that would be if we could if we had an app for that that would be great. All you com computer all you programmers out there, there's your million dollar app if you could develop it. And it would be relevant for anyone who's learning to sight read on any instrument. Maybe it already exists. If it does, let me know. Okay, and here's another thing before I do play this that I've, I'm just thinking of too. I've played through this a couple times and um each time I'm thinking I'm just kind of noticing how I'm p making it easier for me and so I think it would be okay if you pause a little bit and just re you know regroup just for an instant after each set so you would stop I'll show you where breathe two three So musically that's legit okay and also it helps you kind of reset so you can get ready for the moving notes on that on that um, half dotted half okay and also want to point out it's really tricky line for the last two measures going into the last line the first measure so I just want to point out those three measures to you you have a flat. So the first measure you are playing a D natural, uh, a E natural, sorry, which is a regular one on D. So your finger pattern is like this. Then you're separating the notes. 
And I also find, before we go on to this, I'm kind of jumping all over the place here, but I also find that when I uh, have a, when I have a sustained note that needs to cross the string, sometimes you just kind of clench up a little bit. So watch out for that. Try to practice smoothness in the bow across the, the string crossings if you're slurring. So let's look at that measure. So you're playing, um, uh, in the previous two measures, you're playing low one, low four, and sort of getting yourself in that mindset. And then on the the next following measure, you're, you're raising to e, e natural, F sharp, and you also have that B natural, so watch for that. And you have a string crossing that you want to listen to your tone. Don't do that, okay? Try not to, listen for that, I mean, so you don't do it. Just keep it really seamless if you can. <laughs> 